How far is the closest star and how long it would take to reach there? At some point in our lives, we were all posing this question. How far and how long would it take to fly to the stars? Could it be within the time frame of a human? And could this kind of travel someday become the norm? There are several potential answers to this issue. Some in the world of science fiction, some are very simple. Yet coming up a thorough response involve taking into account a number of things. Space is very big, like it or not, and our technology is very limited. But we will have a number of choices to get to the closest solar systems in our galaxy. But before we go any further, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and smash that like button for more quality videos you can certainly get from others. We compile videos and do the research just for you. To answer the question, how far is the closest star and how long would it take to reach there? Let's start with answering first this question. What is the closest star in our planet? The simplest answer is the Sun. It's the nearest star to the Earth nearly 93 million miles away. But maybe that doesn't answer your question. Instead, the closest star of our solar system outside of our Sun is Alpha Centauri. This is not a single star. It's actually a triple star system a three gravity-bound stars together. Two bright closely orbiting stars with a distance which is the Alpha Centauri A and B, dim companion called Proxima Centauri, the closest star in the Earth. As already mentioned, Proxima Centauri is the nearest and closest star in our planet, which is why it makes the most sense to first plot an interstellar mission to this system. Proxima Centauri is now 40 trillion and 208 billion kilometers away, the nearest star to our planet. When we speak around distances from the stars, the light year is usually used. The distance light travels in one year is a light year. It's equivalent to 9.461 by 1012 kilometers. Our planet is approximately 4.35 light years away from Alpha Centauri A and B, and 4.24 light years from Proxima Centauri which is significantly closer to our own. In fact, Alpha Centauri is the brightest star of the three in the system, while Proxima Centauri, the dimmest of the three, is an isolated red dwarf. Such large distances that is hard to conceptualize, but a common analogy sets the sun at the size of a grapefruit. You will have to fly about 2,500 miles, which is about the distance from coast to coast in the continental United States. If you were to get from the grapefruit-sized sun to a grapefruit-sized Alpha Centauri device, and that is just the nearest neighbor to the sun, so how long would it take to reach there? Let's begin with one of the slowest models of space travel to get to Proxima Centauri, starting with Deep Space One. The ion engine is presently the slowest method of propulsion and the most fuel efficient. Ionic propulsion was thought to be the topic of science fiction a few decades ago. However, in recent years, the ion engine support technology has shifted from theory to reality in a major way. The Deep Space One mission to Comet Borelli in 1998 was one of the first missions to use ion drive technology. It's a xenon-powered ion drive using 81.5 kilograms of propellant. It was able to attain a velocity of 56,000 km per hour over 20 months of thrusting during the comet's flyby. Thus, if ionic propulsion were to be used for a mission to Proxima Centauri, a huge source of energy and a considerable amount of propellant would be required for the thrusters. But some estimates can be made based on the premise that a supply of 81.5 kilograms of xenon propellant corresponds to a maximum velocity of 56,000 kilometers per hour. In short, Deep Space One will take over 81,000 years to cross the 4.24 light years between Earth and Proxima Centauri at a maximum velocity of 56,000 kilometers per hour. That would be over 2,700 human years to put the time scale into perspective. It's therefore fair to assume that it will be way too slow for an interplanetary ion engine flight to be considered for a manned interstellar flight. However, if ion thruster were to be made larger and more efficient, like ion exhaust velocity would have to be considerably higher, and ample propellant could be hauled 
to keep the spacecraft running for the entire 4,243 light year journey. The travel time could be significantly reduced, still too long for human lifespan. Voyager 1 In the 1980s, to reach its present velocity of 60,000 km per hour and make it into interstellar space, the spacecraft Voyager 1 is on an interstellar flight. At a pace of 17.3 km per second, it's heading away from the Sun. If the Voyager were to fly to Proxima Centauri, it would take 73,000 years to arrive at this pace. It would also take 4.22 years to arrive if we could fly at the speed of light, an impossibility due to special relativity. Helios 2 The quickest existing means of space travel is referred to as the process of gravity assist, which involves a spacecraft using the relative motion and the direction and velocity of a planet to change. Gravitational assist, especially when using the Earth or another massive planet for a speed boost, are a very useful spaceflight technique. The Helios 2 mission began in 1976 to research the interplanetary medium from 0.3 AU to 1 AU to the Sun, which holds a gravity record with a gravity assist for the highest speed achieved. At that time, the record for closest approach to the Sun was held by Helios 1, launched in 1974, and Helios 2, a traditional NASA Titan, Centaur launch, vehicle launch Helios 2 and put it in highly elliptical orbit. Helios 2 was able to achieve a maximum velocity of more than 240,000 km per hour, or 150,000 miles per hour, at perihelion due to the high eccentricity 0.54 of the solar orbit probes or 190 days. By the gravitational force of the Sun alone, this orbital speed was reached. Technically, the velocity of the Helios 2 perihelion was not a gravitational slingshot. It was a maximum orbital velocity, but it still holds the record despite of being the fastest man-made object. So, if Voyager 1 was traveling at a constant speed of 60,000 km per hour, in the direction of the red dwarf Proxima Centauri, it would take 76,000 years or more than 2,500 generations to reach that time. But it would take 19,000 years or over 600 generations to fly 4,243 light years if it could reach the record-breaking speed of Helios 2's close approach to the Sun, a steady speed of 240,000 km per hour considerably better, but not quite enough in the field of practicality. Why are we unable to fly faster than the speed of light to reach in the closest star in our planet? According to special relativity, an object's mass increases as its speeds increases, and as the speed of the object reaches the speed of light, it reaches infinity. This implies that accelerating an object to the speed of light will require an infinite amount of energy. There is no underlying explanation why. Given we have ample resources, we can't get as close to the speed of light as we want. But in the future, this is possibly far. But Proxima Centauri is just the nearest star at the present. The Sun, the system of Alpha Centauri, and other surrounding stars all shift over time around the Milky Way and as they go, they approach and pass each other. The nearest star will be something else in another 10,000 years or so. Indeed, observations of the movements of stars indicate that many other stars in their existence may have ventured close to the solar system. If this video answered your question about how far is the closest star and how long would it take to reach there, please let us know. Write down your comments below and we will be gladly reading it. But before we end this video, Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up so we can upload related videos. So, see you on the next one!